Uh, councillors, uh, this, as you know, has been a little bit of a moving feast. Um, and so um, we, we attempted to get a little bit of time in terms of our uh, advice to you through the officers uh, once it became evident uh, the number and nature of the appeals to the unitary plan. And uh, so I hope that you are accepting of the fact that we just needed to try and work things up as well as we could to give you the best advice for today so that we can go forward to the new council. So the recommendations that pass today uh, will assist the new council in taking uh, the legal process through from this point, and it is very much a legal process. Um, I have had discussions with the Minister and the Prime Minister in terms of uh, generally where we're at, uh, but um, the advice you get from Penny today, um, we will all be receiving at the same time in terms of the specific nature of the update. So this is news to me too. Uh, Councillor Ross. I'm a member of a couple of organisations that have um, put oh, you in... wanted to clear interest. Yeah. Okay, so, so now number, look, um, number five and number 38. Yeah, it, that, that's good. And um, I think we've variously... I think everyone really um, managed their conflicts very well through that process. So I want to uh, just to re-acknowledge you all on that. And um, if you want to have noted where you think is appropriate, uh, your continuing conflicts in this process because, as we know, um, one or two of the appeals are for judicial review, and I'm confident about the position that you've all taken. Councillor Sharon? I just noted the ones that I had, yep. a, had a conflict, but I also yep. just want to make sure um, item 24, that's the appeal for the how resident rate payers. Yeah, that's good. I'm yep. also noted, thank you. Uh, just, just reflect on this. If you've got anything to add there, councillors, by way of notes on the record, just clip a piece of paper around here so that we can ensure that it's noted. Penny, the show goes on. Thank you. Uh, uh, and to you and the officers, I know it's been um, you know, something of a piece of work in recent days. And so well done to the hard work and the long yards, as usual. There you go, Penny. <coughs> So this is very much a process report in terms of this is the next step uh, in the unitary plan process to make large parts of it operative. Uh, you will see from the report we've received 106 appeals to the decision version of the unitary plan. Uh, 65 of those are appeals to the Environment Court uh, and 41 are appeals on points of law to the High Court. We've also received eight applications for judicial reviews, which have also been filed in the High Court. Some of those mirror uh, the appeals to the High Court, so uh, some applicants have uh, put in two, one a, a judicial review and one an appeal. Uh, there are not 106 appellants. Uh, there are a number of parties that have put in one or more appeals. In the context of what we would have faced and if we were at legacy councils, uh, this probably is a very small number of appeals. Uh, just using the examples that are more recent, the Hauraki Gulf Island section of the Auckland uh, legacy operative plan uh, attracted around 48 to 50 appeals. Uh, then the North Shore section um, of the legacy operative plans attracted around 200 to <coughs> 300 appeals. So only getting 106 appeals is actually a really great outcome for what is a very complicated um, plan that <coughs> involves both a regional policy statement, regional coastal plan, regional plan and district plan. In terms of the essence of the appeals, the majority of them are very site specific or very specific to a particular provision in the plan. And that is a great outcome because that means there are large parts of the plan that are not subject to appeal and which you can now uh, resolve to make operative and put in place the next steps um, which we have to do that are um, just process steps before uh, they are operative. 
And so that's what the, the reason for this report is today, is to recommend to you that you make those parts of the unit to plan not subject to appeal operative. That means for those particular provisions, uh, any application will only be assessed against one set of <coughs> rules. We do have um, a number of appeals, one in particular to the High Court, which is questioning the approach that the Independent Han Hearings Panel and by association uh, the Council are making its decision on how the zoning is applied across Auckland. Uh, the current wording of that appeal is very broad and our legal advice is that that means that the unitary plan planning maps, the zoning maps that tell you what is the zone that your property might be, um, is, cannot be made operative. Uh, the consequence of that will be that if you wish to go undertake an activity on your property that relies on the zoning, uh, to tell you what are the rules, you will be assessed against both the unitary plan and the legacy operative plan rules. And in the, the, the complex uh, RMA world, what tends to happen is that the weight that you give to the two sets of rules uh, depends more on um, where we're at in the process, but also there is a tendency to air to be cautious and rely on the more restrictive rules that apply when you've got two sets of, of rules uh, in play. And for many applications that will mean the legacy rules will continue to be the ones that are given greater weight, uh, which does mean in some areas that the, you know, the development capacity that the unitary plan is providing will not necessarily be able to be uptaken, or it could mean notification of an activity that is not deemed to be required to be notified under the unitary plan. Uh, it, there's a bit of uncertainty around the whole process because you have to look at it on a site-by-site -site basis. And I think the, the key thing for us that those appeals actually bring to this process is a level of uncertainty, complexity, and in some cases, additional cost. So obviously, as a council, we will be wanting to work with the High Court uh, as quickly as possible to see if we can um, resolve all of the High Court appeals to remove that uncertainty. Uh, we have also approached the, the lawyers of that particular appeal to see if we can narrow down the scope of the appeal, uh, but at this time it is still a very broad appeal, which is why we cannot make the zoning maps uh, operative. You will see from the, the recommendations that uh, as well as make, making those parts of the regional policy statement, uh, the regional plan and the district plan rules operative where they're not subject to appeals, we are also recommending that you <coughs> refer the regional coastal plan provisions to the Minister of Conservation. That is a requirement under the RMA that the Minister of Conservation has to sign off on a regional coastal plan. So uh, that's why we can't automatically make that operative until um, she has signed off on that and that will be referred to her to do that. Uh, the last two recommendations are really about the logistics. <coughs> if um, these resolutions go through, the next step is that staff will um, complete tagging uh, the e-plan with telling the, everybody which parts of the plan are subject to appeal, so it's very clear. Uh, that takes a little while you know, on the electronic process and then um, we need to publicly notify that that, uh, that plan is available that shows what has become operative not and, and that will take us a couple of weeks so we need to get a delegation um, to undertake that process and then secondly uh, because we are hoping to progress uh, the, both the Environment Court Appeals and the High Court Appeals as quickly as possible uh, there could be an opportunity over the next few weeks uh, for us to resolve some of these appeals, particularly the Environment Court ones, uh, through mediation. And we, would, um, we are seeking the delegation of the Chief Executive and um, Councillor Cashmore as the <laughs> one remaining councillor who um, <laughs> exists during the, the, the election period um, to, to give...
to give direction to staff on um, whether or not we should agree to any mediation issues that arise. Uh, we, we don't know if we'll get any. Uh, we'll, we'll really depend on working through the process over the next few weeks. Obviously, once the new council is in place and there is a committee that has been assigned to deal uh, with the appeal issues, we will then be following the standard practice of bringing back uh, to the committee guidance on seeking guidance on how we treat these appeals in our cases before uh, the Environment Court and the High Court. In the interim, we will be using the decision version of the council as the guidance on what to mediate on. Happy to answer any questions. Councillor <coughs> Penny, you would like to move this? I'm happy to move. Mr Mayor, can I, re Just can I declare an interest? Um, I, I believe I'm a member of a, a Waiheke group that is appealing okay. the RUB. Um, yep. Not a decision, we'll, we'll really. Mm. Uh, Councillor Alf, do you like to second this? Yep. Done. Very good. Yeah, we never voted on that. So. Okay. Um, well, uh, councillors, um, uh, I, I'm sure Councillor Penny would like to um, either ask questions or uh, comment. I, I don't really have a lot to say, uh, to be fair. Um, uh, I, I think that what has been said by Councillor Penny... Uh, no, sorry, by Penny... There's so many pennies in this chamber. <laughs> penny three. By us. By Penny three, yeah, that'll do. By Penny three. Uh, by, by Penny Parrott um, is quite sort of black and white and salutary. And I guess that there will be a good body of legal work, at the very least, for the new council. Uh, but there you go, that's democracy. Councillor Penny H. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, I do have a question, and you're right, it is democracy. On national radio, that, that wonderful, well-informed and extraordinarily balanced radio station, the only one worth listening to, um, this morning interviewed Phil Twyford, who asked about the opportunity that may exist for legislative, some sort of legislative intervention, flipping around the making operative of the unitary plan whilst the appeals are worked through to then amend the unitary plan once those appeals are done. Now, I don't know if that's possible, but I just wondered if we had explored that as an option. Very good question. Penny, mm. true. So, so currently under the Resource Management Act, the presumption is that uh, a plan cannot become operative until such time as all appeals are... Um, Settled, or you can make parts of it operative where, in part, where there are no appeals. I, I, I didn't, I wasn't listening to the radio, but it, but it, it seems as though Mr. Twyford is, is talking about an issue that's been debated um, quite consistently over the years about why wouldn't you turn that presumption around. Uh, we're dealing with a plan that has been reviewed and gone through the hearings process. Yep. It's the new plan, so yeah, rather right. than and presuming that the legacy plans are the right plans, it's it changed the presumption round to say the decision version is is the best way forward until <coughs> such time proven in the courts it's not. Uh, that would uh, require a change to legislation. Uh, we have had various conversations with Ministry for Environment staff over the whole process of this unitary plan about um, issues like that, uh, but that's where it's been just discussions at a staff level. Okay. So I guess, Mr Mayor, that's something that may be, depending on how the discussions unfold with the appellants, and if the scope and breadth of their appeal still remains um, largely covering the entire region, I guess discussion could be continued with MFE and the ministers involved. I think um, just to be a little bit helpful and certainly without um, uh, paraphrasing or, or um, quoting, um, the ministers um, are most certainly uh, very interested uh, and um, uh, as we have all heard, are very enthusiastic as a government to get this plan into place. Uh, and so um, some of those more pragmatic discussions around process mm. uh, to assist, um, you know, and certainly clarify the issues, the specific issues of concern, <coughs> which clearly has not happened as yet. 
um, may well help us to get to the end of the track quicker than what otherwise might be. Now I've got Councillor um, 